Welcome back. In this Python tutorial, we're going to go over several examples of some of the commonly used TKinter widgets. We will go ahead and start out with a Hello World review. Then we will go over the widgets, and then we'll go over the grid system that you can use to lay out your widgets. Okay. The first thing we have done is we have imported TKinter. The next thing we need to do is to create our main window. To do that, we go ahead and reference tkinter.tk and make sure you put the round brackets after the tk. Then we assign that to the variable root. Then here we have created our tkinter widget, which in this example is just a label. To create the label, we reference tkinter.label. And inside the label round brackets, we want the label to go inside the root main window. So we've gone ahead and put that in first. Then we assign the text for what you want the label to say. Then we use label.pack to pack the label inside the window. Then we reference the root main window dot main loop, and this keeps the window open and running. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see here we have our window with our TK enter label widget. Now, let's move on to our widget examples. Here, we've gone ahead and imported tkinter as tk. With this code, we have created our main window. The window will have a yellow background with a size of 600 by 800. And the widgets that we have created include the label, the button, a check button, an entry, a slider, which in TK Enter is called the scale, a list box, and a radio button. So let's go ahead and run this. And here we have our label. Here's the button, and this is the check button. This is the example of the entry. This is the slider or the scale. And here we have our list box. And here we have our radio buttons. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go over the code for all of these different widgets. For the label widget here, we have used this code here. We reference tkinter as tk.label. The label is going to go in the root main window. And the text will say, hello, everybody. Then we pack the label inside the window. And we have provided an argument with pad Y to give us a little bit more space on the Y axis. For the button widget here, we have used this code. We reference tkinter.button. The button will go in the root main window. The text for the button will say, press button. And you'll notice that the text color is green. For that, we have assigned green to foreground. When the button is pressed, we want to activate a function. And we're going to assign that function to the command argument. The name of the function is button action. And we have created that function here. So when the button is pressed, it's going to activate this function. And it's going to print a message that says button pressed. And here, we have packed the button into the main root window. Okay, so when we press this button, it's going to activate this function, and it's going to print this message right here. Let's test it out. And you can see our message is printed to the console. Okay? For the next example, we have the check button. Now currently, you'll notice that the background is yellow. Now when we check this box or button, it's going to turn the background white, kind of like turning on a light. Then when we uncheck it, it's going to turn the background black, kind of like turning a light off. Let's try it out. Okay, 
So here the light is on and off. So the first thing we did is we created our check button. We use tk.checkbutton. It's going to go in the root main window. The text is on off. We have associated a variable with this check button. And we have created that here. And that will be of the int type. The function that will be activated by the check button is named check button action. And we have created that function here. Okay, so the check button has two default states, which are 0 and 1. And those default states will be assigned to this variable here. So this variable will keep track of the state of the check button. And to get the state of the check button, we just go ahead and reference the variable dot get. And if the state of the check button is 1, which would be equivalent to the box being checked, we're going to make the background of the window white. If it is 0, we're going to make the background of the root window black, which gives us the effect of turning the light on or off. And once again, we've packed the button into the window. The next widget is our entry widget, here. The entry widget allows us to type in text. So let's type in a message. Okay, so we've typed in our text, and then we want to go ahead and use this text. So let's press the button. And what we've done in this example is just transfer the text from the text box, or entry, to the console. And you can see the message here. How is your day? Okay, so to create the entry widget, one thing we've done a little bit different in this example is we've gone ahead and created a frame. And you can see the frame here. To create the frame, we use tkenter.frame. The frame is going to go in the main root window with a border width of 5 with a sunken effect. So then we reference the frame.pack and that will pack the frame into the main window. Then here we've created our entry text box. And the entry is going to go into the frame. And then here we pack the entry into the frame. So the frame will go into the main window, and the entry will go into the frame. Then we went ahead and created a button, which will transfer the text from the entry to the console. Okay, so we created our button, which will go inside the frame. And when the button is pressed, it's going to activate our get entry text function, which we created here. Now notice that our entry message printed to the console, but it also updated our label here. Let's type in a new message. Let's press the button, and you can see it printed to the console, and it updated the label. And if you'd like to update a label, then you can use the label variable dot configure and put in the new text. And in this case, it's going to update with the text from our entry text box. And to get the text, we just use dot get. Okay, so by now, you're probably noticing a pattern. One way that you can create simple widgets and then interact with those widgets is to go ahead and create the widget and then create a function that the widget will activate. And you'll notice that we assign that function to command. Sometimes you'll hear these functions called callbacks. Next, let's go over the slider or scale widget here. Okay, so for this widget, let's say that you have a restaurant bill, and it's $100. And you want to see how different tip amounts will affect the total bill. We can use the slider for the tip, and the entry box for the bill, and then the label will show us the total bill. So let's go ahead and slide the slider. And you can see how the label updates, as well as the console. And the console will show us the slider value. The label will show us the total bill. Okay, so to create the scale, we use tk.scale. And then here we put in all of our parameters or arguments. For the entry text box, we created that here. And then for the total bill label, we created that here. We have packed the slider 
the entry text box and the label into our frame, which will go inside the main window. You can see the frame here. And we created the frame like we did in the last example. So for the slider scale, the function that will be activated when the slider changes is the calculate total bill. And we created that function here. And this function will basically take the text, which is the bill amount from the entry box, and then it will take the tip percentage from the slider scale, apply the tip to the bill, and then give us the total bill, which will be displayed in the label. Next, let's go over the list box widget. So here we have our list box with five items. So in this example, we're just going to choose one of the items, then we're going to press the button, and we want to transfer the text from the item to our label here. So let's go ahead and choose three. Let's press the button, and you can see the label updates with the selected item. Okay, so to create the list box, we use tk.listbox. We're going to put the list box inside of a frame, and we created the frame here. Then, after we have created our list box, we can go ahead and insert items into the list box. If you'd like to insert one item, you can do it like this. If you'd like to insert several items, you can do it like this with a for loop. Here we have created our button. When we press the button, it's going to activate this function that we created here. To access the selection, we reference the list box dot cur selection. To make sure that we actually have something selected, we use if selection. And if we have an item selected, using this code here, we reference the list box item and then we get the actual item. The reason that we have used the square brackets with the zero is because the item is typically a one digit tuple and this will give us just the digit. Then we wanna go ahead and update our label with the item that we selected. And to do that, we reference the label dot configure. Then we put in the new text using this code, just like we've done with the print. So let's try it out one more time. We'll select two, we press the button, and the label is updated. Okay, so for the last example, let's go over our radio buttons. Now, depending on the radio button selected, we're going to get an image displayed here. So here we have mountains, here we have boating, and here we have camping. Okay, so the first thing we did is we created our three radio buttons. All of our radio buttons will be placed inside the main root window. For the text, we have gone ahead and assigned mountains, boating, and camping. All of the radio buttons are going to have a value associated with one variable. And we have created that variable here. And in this case, since you can only click one radio button at a time, Whichever radio button is clicked, the value associated with that radio button, which we have assigned here, 1, 2, 3, will be assigned to the variable. And then when one of the radio buttons is clicked, it is going to activate or call the radio button function, which is here. So if this first radio button is clicked for the mountains, the value of 1 will be assigned to this variable, and then we will get that value and test if it's equal to 1. And if it is equal to 1, we are going to use the Unicode text representation for mountains. If this radio button is clicked for boating, the value of 2 will be assigned to this variable. Then we'll get the value, do our test if it's equal to 2 we will use the Unicode representation for boating. If the third radio button is clicked, which has the value of three, that will be assigned to our variable, and we'll get the value, do the test if it's equal to three, and then we'll use the Unicode for camping. Now, 
the label that will be updated using configure was created here. So here we have created nine labels. And instead of pack, we've used grid. And grid can be used to determine where each label goes within the window and also where each label is placed in relationship to the other labels. So for each label, we reference tkinter.label. Each label will be placed inside the main root window. Assign the text. Here we have the color for the background. And then here we have the font type and size. Then for the grid placement, we reference the label.grid. Then we put in the row and the column. And if you would like extra padding, you can put that in with pad X, pad Y. Now for the row and column, this is best explained with a visual. So let's go ahead and run this. So for label 1, we've gone ahead and put that at row 0, column 0, here. Label 2 is at row 0, column 1, here. Label 3 is at row 0, column 2, here. Label 4 is at row 1, column 0, here. So you'll notice that the rows and columns start at zero. So this is row zero, row one, row two, column zero, column one, column two. So you can see how the pattern works. That's all we have for this tutorial. Join us again next time.